Welcome to our sanctuary here at Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Essex, Maryland, as we sing our October God on the Go hymn for this month. We'll be singing Amazing Grace. If you'd like to do some snapping or clapping along with me to keep the beat, and we'll make this energetic expression for God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no last days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now i see our scripture for reflection is the gospel of mark chapter 10 verses 13 through 16. people were bringing little children to jesus in order that he might touch them and bless them the disciples tried to shoo them away but when Jesus saw this, he was upset and said to them, don't you dare try to keep these little children from me. Let me hold them. The kingdom of God belongs to little ones just like these. If you aren't open to God's kingdom like a little child is open, you will never enter the kingdom. And he picked them up in his arms and laid his hands on the children and blessed them. What wonderful words of welcome from Jesus to have the children come to him. That um, this idea that no one is allowed to be kept separate from Jesus. Jesus brings everyone in to be held, to be blessed, and to be welcomed. And that is part of what we do here at church. We're currently in our narthex, the 
welcoming space here at Holy Trinity. This is where an usher would greet you, would offer you a bulletin, maybe even ask you how your week is going. There'd be some other members of the church here to greet you as well. And St. Philip's folks and St. George's folks, I'm sure you have a space similar to this where people gather and talk and check in with one another. This is all part of our welcome here in our churches because this is part of our house. It's the same as if you were to welcome someone into your home. So when you brought folks in, you'd want to ask them how they are, if they need anything, maybe offer them a drink of water. It's the same as when we come into our worship space. We have seats that we direct folks to, to rest and pray. We have our baptismal font here as a reminder of the welcome that we have into God's family. This is all rooted in how we greet one another, how we welcome one another, and remind one another that we are all siblings. We are all family with and in God. I also want to add that we have other symbols of welcome that might not immediately come to mind. Yes, we can greet one another with our words, maybe with a wave. Uh, we have our brilliant red doors that we open um, for everyone to say um, that you know you are welcome here. But another symbol of welcome that's relatively new in our community is this. We are wearing these masks not just to protect ourselves, but to protect other people. And this is really a symbol of welcome because being able to wear this over our faces actually gives us the ability to be together in a way that we wouldn't be able to be together otherwise. Now, I know some of you may be worshiping online, so having that ability to connect with one another for worship through the internet is also a way of welcoming. And it's something that's invisible, that we get to actually have a way to be connected to folks that otherwise we wouldn't get to see or hear or say hi to. I'm actually able to spend this time with you as a way of, of welcome and continuing to learn, inviting into this journey with Jesus through this technology. And that is something that is also deeply important as part of a way that we can welcome one another into a journey with Christ. And so that's part of what I hope you all experience when you come to church. Not only are you welcomed as a child or as a teenager, as a young adult, as an adult, or uh, wherever you are in your stage of life, I hope that you feel welcome. That is part of what we offer in Christ, rooted in this passage of welcome, that all are meant to be part of God's family in God's house. And so that is part of our reflection for the week. Your challenge for the week is to think, how can I welcome others as Jesus does? How can I welcome others as Jesus does? So thank you all for joining in for our God on the go this week, and let us pray. God, we are thankful that we have this lesson from Jesus, that we are to be open. We are to welcome all whom you send to us in our lives, welcoming everyone equally and caring for everyone, no matter their age, what they dress like, or what they look like. We thank you for this image of heaven in our midst. We lift this in your most holy name. Well, God be with you all this week as you continue this practice of welcoming and greeting others, whether you're at home, whether you're at school or work or at church. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.